Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my man Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. Uh, and we are coming to you on a Thursday where there is a one-game slate, uh, Dallas at Detroit. We cover that one and player props from it because that's how dedicated we are to bringing those to you each and every weekday of the regular season. Uh, we In this episode, we are bringing you a special sort of let's say quarter to third of the way through the season uh, MVP status and uh, some of the bets that we like as they currently stand. As you know, those odds continue to uh, remain live and change as things happen this season. You cannot bet on uh, these during the NBA game. So you got to make sure you get these in earlier than the evening time when these games start for you. Um, so we'll go ahead and lift list off some of the ones that we like best uh, and then go ahead and get into why we think a few of these guys are uh, worth putting some money on. Nate, let's go ahead and list off a few of these guys and then get into uh, your first uh, pick and guy that you want to talk about. I'm sure he plays for a team on the East Coast. Uh, well, yeah, it's a three-horse race at the top right now. Around plus 270 for Tatum, Luka, or Giannis. And right now, I mean, Tatum, I think, cemented himself as the front runner with yet another ridiculous performance against the Heat team that's usually pretty good at guarding him. Went for 49, 8 for 12 from 3. Uh, he has multiple 45 and 10 games with eight threes. So the first person to ever do that. Uh, and he's already done it twice this season. Um, and league, league best plus minus. You know, it's really a team award, though, if you're going to give it to him. Um, it, it's basically, if, right. can the Celtics hold on to this pace? Uh, they are right now four points per 100 possessions ahead of the record for offensive efficiency, which is a staggering lead. Uh, can they keep it up for the, the, the other three quarters of the season? Remains to be seen. Um, Luca, Giannis, the usual suspects. You, you talk about who we're going to bet on now. I, I think with those three guys all on such equal footing, I don't think there's any value to, say, place a quarter of season bet on them. Um, unless, in my opinion, you're betting on Luca because he is so clearly the most important player for his team. Um, but I, I don't know if the Mavericks are going to be good enough for that to come through. But for value right now, um, I think it's Kevin Durant at plus 3,500 on FanDuel. Um, And he's just starting to get into his MVP form. His last four games, 38 points per game, along with, you know, eight rebounds, seven assists, carrying a huge load, 36% usage. Incredible off efficiency with a 131 offensive rating. The Nets are six and two since he called out the rest of his starting lineup by name, and then put it on his shoulders when started going on this tear. Uh, he leads the NBA in total minutes, total points, also total turnovers, which he will say is due to the circumstance of who he's playing with. I mean, he's really got to bludgeon voters with the uh, with the numbers in order for them to give it to him after he requested a trade requested and sort of got his coach fired. <clears throat> but, I mean, let's say the Nets actually do manage to trade Kyrie and Durant continues to put up these numbers and the Nets get the four seed. Uh, there is there is an opportunity there uh, for him to come in and sw- swoop in and, and be in the mix. But it's the MVP. I mean, you you got to find somebody who really has a, a real strong case. So, I mean, that's just an interesting one to look at. I don't know. What's what's it for you, Josh? You thinking Steph at plus 900 still as the best value? Uh, I mean, the, yeah, the, the, the question here is value right now, right? So let's start this off by tooting uh, our horns and saying Tatum at 13 to 1 uh, when we did our preseason MVP award episode was beautiful uh, and looked amazing right away. Um He's got, you know, there's there's a few different things in terms of like narrative and th- how things play out. But starting right now for value, like you said, there's three clear front runners and I'm not going to place any money on any of them right now. The only one I would consider is Tatum. Well, let's put it this way. I would consider Tatum and Luca well before I would consider Giannis. And, and the reason is narrative there. Y- y- Tatum and this team. Uh, 18 and four, I don't see them letting up, dude. Like they, they could be better at defense. First of all, that still has yet to improve, um, which I think it will, but I think they're also just kind of like, 
Precisely. Rob Will is that is the game changer there for them on defense. Just wait and see. The defensive rating will plummet back down for them when that happens. Um, the question is, like, how do they blow teams out even more than they are right now? I guess they're going to sacrifice some offense as, you know, Rob Will's not going to be able to run up and down the floor for, for 25 minutes. Uh, the, when he's in for 25 minutes, he's not going to be necessarily like a rim runner. They're going to basically want him to cement himself on defense. And if the offense is already in transition, you can work your way up the court as at your leisure, big man. Don't worry about it, which does stimmy the offense a little bit. So we'll see. Like, I think either way, they're going to remain at this pace of winning 18 out of 22 games uh, all the way through the rest of the season and get their 60 wins. So um, they just look that good on unstoppable on offense. And there's, I mean, they are shooting a barrage of threes, but like they're open threes, man. And they look really good. Uh, I think we were both hoping that the Heat limited their three point attempts a bit more last night as we were talking about the Heat being able to cover. That was the only thing that they did. There was too many open threes. Um, so anyway, moving forward to like value right now where I would place my money. Right. And that's because you, you're, you're, you're sort of foreseeing, um, things playing out in a way for guys like Steph, Joel Embiid, Nicola, um, and maybe Ja or Devin Booker, right? Those are the next guys that I would even consider on tier two KD. Like he's at plus 1700, but we've already, you've already kind of talked about him. And I think he's the first guy that you're talking about in this second tier that like is, there's some things that need to play out for him. Right. And, uh, some of that for him. Him is is sort of ingratiating himself a bit more uh, to to the people who are voting, aka the media. Um, but let's not touch on that subject for now. Steph at plus eight hundred. What needs to happen for that to, for those odds to shorten if you bet on it now, and and those to, for you know him to sort of rise in those rankings? Um, is the Warriors to play better on defense? Like he's already doing everything he can. His on off numbers are absolutely absurd at this point. Um, he's got the, the the his team has the worst net rating when he is off the court of any of these stars minus seventeen point seven. When Steph is off the floor this season, um, you know, there's other guys with with massive numbers like that as well, uh, including, um, you know, one guy that we we haven't talked about too much. But Nikola is another guy I want to talk about as well. Jokic, his on off is plus 14.4 when he's on minus uh, 12.4 when he's off. So same concept here. It's like a what, 28 turnaround, whatever point turnaround uh, in that net rating. Same for Steph when he, you know, for him. So like those are two guys where. Steph is a different story for him. The, the dubs need to play better. Uh, it's a team. There is a little bit of a team aspect to this where they need to play defense in a way that they are winning games that they should win uh, and not getting blown out in games that they should be hanging around in, if not winning against top tier competition. Uh, the, I, I don't know if that's going to happen for him. I'm not, I'm not going there. The next guy uh, for me is Jokic at twenty at plus twenty two hundred. I know it's crazy, but it's like, dude, his team. If you're looking at the standings right now, his team has the fourth best record in the league at fourteen and seven. They're second in the West. They're obviously atop their division as well. With the yeah, the Pelis are chasing him, but they're they're up there. So like, or I'm sorry, the Pelis aren't even in theirs, uh, their their division. But either way, they're they're in a place right now that like. They're playing well, and, and they are who we thought they were uh, in terms of having Bruce Brown and KCP around to help out that wing defense, which was really, really bad last season. That's the market improvement over uh, what Will Barton was bringing. Um, Jamal Murray is continuing to get better. That's another easy sort of uh, you know uh, way that this team continue. You, you can guarantee that this team will will stay in, let's say, like a top four seed in the West, as we all predicted. Um, a lot of people predicting them to win the West, and they're only one game back right now with, like I said, Jamal Murray getting better, and then they're all continuing to click so with Jokic's ridiculous on off um and and, and, you know that that's one more for me I'm gonna throw one more at you in tier two Joel Embiid who I also put a little bit on at the beginning of the season I thought he would do a lot better but uh we're coming off a game where you know he didn't even really do anything because he played against the Cavs and the the 76ers lost that game in the second quarter uh ended up getting blown the hell out by like 30 points or whatever but they were never even in that game from like basically the end of the first quarter on uh so it looked really bad for him but that all being said, like when you look at what he's doing without James Harden and the way that he's keeping Philly around as the fifth seed, uh, basically by himself averaging like 30 and 12 over his last like 10 games, uh, also throwing the six assists for our man, like he's doing it all, all over the floor, being efficient. Obviously his defensive rating is, is crucial as well. And that's something that um, at some point you have to take into consideration a bit more. If he's going to play 70 games, like he's ready to do this season, it seems, plus be the most impactful defender on the floor almost all the time like give the man some love plus 1500 that's the he and Jokic are the sort of tier two guys that I would look at right now because of the way that I can see them maintaining well, this all season and Bede's missed eight games so you're saying he's only going to miss four more games the entire rest of the season to get yeah. to 70 that's why I'm not even mentioning him games. 
I know Joker is, is somebody we just gloss over because the the voter fatigue, a third straight MVP, but he is right there tied with Luca at the, the top of the league in PER once again, just does his thing. Um, but you look at some of these advanced numbers, I'm basically going to say why I if if the if the season ended today, Luca is the MVP still over Tatum in my opinion. Um, value over replacement, Luca first, then Steph Joker. Katie Tatum. Then you go like six more guys to Giannis. Uh, win shares, same thing. Luca, Katie Tatum, like eight more guys to Giannis. It's because the Bucks yeah. are freaking good, and it's not just about Giannis. He is the yeah. highest usage guy on that team. Middleton's coming back too. Ingles coming back. Brooke Lopez is the front runner for Defensive Player of the Year, and Giannis will be the first to tell you that my defense is much better because of Brooke. And now his actual individual oh, wow. de- defensive rating has slipped in his last six games while he's putting up huge numbers. But, mm. um, and I'll just quick aside here. Can I throw, can, can I throw one more in there? Drew, Drew holiday is seems yeah. to be just as important. If not more there, there he has, uh, the team has the worst net rating when he's off the floor in terms of those on yeah. off numbers. So. They're stacked. The Celtics are stacked too. I mean, which is why you, you say Tatum has the best plus minus. That's not really an advanced stat to show his particular, uh, value in, in terms of whether you take them off the floor, can they still win games? I mean, they did. They crushed the Wizards who were playing great ball. Uh, so, I mean, the Mavericks, if Luka were to sprain his ankle, would be among the worst teams in the league, like right away. Uh, he's just putting up monster numbers. Fair. Quick aside, when, I, when I'm talking about the Bucks, the Defensive Player of the Year, Anthony Davis is plus 2,200 for DPOI, and we're not going to do a full episode about that, but that, I think, is the best value you can do on an awards bet right now. He leads the league in defensive rating. Interesting. He's looking like peak Anthony Davis again. Lakers are turning it around. Uh, I would get your money down on that, but <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Luka, to me, is the best player in the world. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm never going to really say Giannis is the best player in the world. He shoots below 60% of the free throw line. He can't hit a jump shot. Um, he can't necessarily bend the game to his will. He, he depends on officiating to a degree and, and he has more talent around him. So that's why, I, and, and I mean, Luca's just bludgeoning you over the head with these numbers. I mean, three 40 point triple doubles already on the season. The usage rate doesn't even tell the story. And then the efficiency on top of that, he has the second highest usage, but he's 116th in turnover percentage. Oh, uh, when he's on the floor. So, I mean, he has the fifth most raw turnovers, but, you know, basically right. using the percentage of, of turnovers you're going to throw there when, based on how much he's out there. Uh, I mean, just really impressive the way he's been able to manipulate defenses and take care of the ball and drag the Mavs to 500. The question is, yeah, yeah can, will we get voters to vote for another Russell Westbrook year where a four where maybe a fifth seed, a sixth seed, which Joker just got right? Six seed nuggets. Sure. Um, I think if Luca yeah. does the same, if he carries the Mavs to the sixth seed in, in a competitive West, he should be the MVP at the end of the day. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, what if Tatum's team has the best record? Like, there are some things that if you want to dig into for the C's, like you said, they're stacked as well. Um, man, now I, this is the problem with the wars where you also talk about most valuable, like most valuable to his team. Is that that that's what we're saying here? Obviously, Luca, right? Like, that's not even a question. Uh, like, then you say, well, you have to overcome some things and, and, and win games. And then you can fight back that argument, right, with, well, Joker won with a six seed last year. I agree. The thing is, is there was nobody on, like, the top. First of all, Miami was the top seed in, in the East. You weren't going to, there was nobody on that team. Uh, Milwaukee coming in. Nobody on that team, uh, right? Like they're, they're with with Giannis and the voter fatigue last year as well. Um, and then yeah, you look at the Sixers and on, and it's like yeah, Embiid didn't play enough games. There was just there was nobody on the teams that were higher than Joker to get that award. That is which was part of it in my opinion. That because the the guys that were really uh, sort of uh, competing with him in terms of all those VORP and Raptor and all the other stuff that the the you know advanced stats nerds used to to give this award to someone. The only other person in that in his stratosphere last year, uh, Joker being was Giannis with Luca coming up but also missing a bunch of games and Luca just played so poorly at the beginning of the season he took himself out of it so um yeah this year right now it's Tatum and, and Luca uh Luca's gonna need to win a few more games I, th- I mean they're gonna need to be a bit better than a six seed in my opinion 
if Tatum is doing what he's doing while they're a, a one seed with far and away the best record in the league. That That's really, I think, going to be a pr- pretty big factor this season if the Celtics are that much better than everybody else, especially in their conference. The other thing, just to add to Tatum, um, you know, JB, our guy Jalen Brown, I love him. Um, but when he's off the floor, they have the highest net rating of, of like basically the team has the highest net rate like of any player on their team when he's off the floor. They have the highest net rating at 16.2. Um, it's not like a direct correlation, but it is a, a feather in the cap of Jay Tatum, in my opinion, which is, you know, they stagger those guys minutes at times so that, you know, JB can play with the the, uh, the second unit and then have Tatum come in and stagger them a bit after they start the game together for the first like seven, eight minutes. Um, and that that's an indictment on J- J- Jalen Brown a little bit that, right, like Tatum's still able to do everything. Not even an indictment on him. It's just a notch for on the belt of, of Tatum that he's able to do everything he's able to do with, with uh, Brown off the floor. So just got to dive into it. It's, it's just, it's early. And if you're going to find value, Nate, I don't think we're going to be talking about these three guys right now the time to hit Luca and, and uh Jay Tatum was before the season started now you're you're saying who could sort of overtake them in the event that obviously knock on wood there's an injury we don't want that or anything sort of disastrous like that happens so Anyway, this is a fun episode. A quarter of the way through the season, as we said, we'll be continuing to come back with you with these game videos and player props each and every weekday of the regular season. Probably be back uh, soon enough with another uh, status update on the rank or the, uh, the the odds here for these MVP awards and the like. So until we see you next, happy betting.